Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. There. Oh, hey, hi, welcome. You know what? Cell phones are really handy tools. We can't even leave the house without them these days. And they're handy for doing lots of things. Taking pictures, video, getting into fights with people you don't even know on social media. But did you know they're really handy tools during an investigation? Let's go back to the office and we'll have a look at some ways cell phones are really useful tools in an investigation. Come on. Hey, welcome back to the office now. So, as I said, cell phones are very good tools as far as cameras and video cameras go, but there are a few built-in apps to the cell phones that really work good during an investigation and some very handy third-party applications. Now, just as a caveat, I'm not looking at any health and safety management software, any safety data management software, or any incident investigation or incident reporting tools. This is strictly about applications that would aid you in an investigation. As always, there's uh, time codes in the description and there's chapters along the bottom of your uh, video here that you can click on and move about. But I would suggest that you watch each section because I do have some pros and cons and some cautionary points regarding using the different applications. Also, uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some additional cautionary points regarding the use of phones during an investigation. So let's cover these built-in apps. The first one I want to talk about is a voice recorder. Now, it's a really super handy tool. And I bet you, you're thinking to yourself, well, Kevin, you can use this to, uh, when you're interviewing uh, the workers involved and the different witnesses. And no. Uh-uh. No. I'll talk about that in a sec. What I do use it for is exactly what it is. It's called the Voice Memos app in iOS. I don't know what it's called in Android, but I'm sure Android has an equivalent. If I don't have my clipboard, it is easier. If I like my clipboard because it's easier to write big and fast than it is small, neat, and you end up doing it slowly. And it's just difficult when you're working in an investigation scene. So what I do is I will click it and I will just use uh, the voice memo app and give just a couple of points. I'm walking along this area, this is what I see, or just measured this area, this is the measurement noted, this is something else that's noted as well. And so what happens is, is with all of these short notes, I give myself context to the different images or videos I've shot or the different measurements I've taken when I don't necessarily have the time to write notes. Sometimes uh, your incident investigation is going to be very quick because there's always this notion of we have to get up and running as soon as possible, time is money. So this is what I find the Voice Memo app very handy for. Now, the reason I don't use it during uh, interviews with the workers involved or witnesses is because the moment that happens, people clam up. They quit talking. I got nothing to say. That, that's just it in a nutshell. Nobody wants to be recorded. Now, obviously, depending on the situation, authorities having jurisdiction and police forces will often record during these situations. But as an, a, a regular workplace incident investigator, I don't. If your company has provided you that opportunity to be able to do so, great. I find, though, it's not nearly as effective as just taking notes and letting the people talk. Because the moment they think they're recorded, yeah. They're a little hesitant. That's the truth. The next one that I like to use is the iOS measure device. It's really good. Now, just a quick bit here. There's a ruler in front of me. You can see my messy desk. And what I'm going to do is just tap a start point at the beginning of the ruler. And I'm going to move along to the end of the ruler. And there you have 12 inches. Now, it says 11 and a half, but that's how I jerked. Now, it does work really well. It does. I find it. Um, there are some cases, though, and I'll just share a couple of case points with you uh, right now. I'll get rid of the phone just for a second. One of the case studies I did is measured an area on a wall, and we measured out 10 feet 6 inches, as you can see, or 126 inches. Measured it along the whole entire wall uh, from one point to another. And then what I did is I measured it. Now, this is a quick screen recording of it. And a couple of caveats. Number one, you have to be about 18 inches to two feet away. That's, I 
think I'm going to say 45 centimeters to 60 centimeters. Sorry, I'm old. I still think in inches, uh, at least because what happens is the application tells you to move closer and further away. And I'm going to show you a couple instances. Here's the one where we measured along a wall. And same point where I started the tape, clicked it, the plus button, moved along and got to the point where we ended. Hit the plus button, move back, and what it does is it allows you, you can snap using the button that you see just above the plus button and actually snap images. This works really well, and I'll show you a sample image in just a sec. This works really well because you can take and put images like this into your report. And so if you're measuring a few different areas, you can measure it, snap it, capture the image, and then you're not having to try and take pictures of your measuring tape and, and adding more pictures when people might not be able to see the measuring tape to begin with, but they can see the distance of the wall. Plus, it keeps you from having to edit in Word or whatever document processing application you're using and adding the measurements. They're already there, so it does save a lot of time. There are some pros and cons to it as well. Depending on the situation and where you are, I'll show you a picture where I measured my sidewalk in just a second. And uh, actually, let's just jump into the video and I'll show you right now. So I measured my sidewalk. I measured out 20 feet. And uh, as you can see in there, I'm starting the measurement. And I walk along. Now, my sidewalk is rather uneven. I'm trying to walk sideways, tripping over the snowbank behind me. And, and at one point, the phone even tells me to move further away because I'm trying to move too close. So I'm bent over. So you have to stay a constant distance from what you're measuring. And as you can see there, there's 20 feet, but I've lost five inches in 20 feet. So about a quarter of an inch either way, every foot I seem to have lost. Great idea, but what I did is I took it and I moved and used uh, the image on a sidewalk along a walk. And it was cold that day and people were driving by and staring at me, but I measured out uh, the equivalent of 35 feet. And then I measured it and I got it just perfect because I held the phone about two feet away from the sidewalk and I walked very slowly and I took the measurement and it worked out really well. It does work, but like I said, there are some caveats to it. It, how should I say, it might be easier to use a measuring tape at times if you have it, but if you get to the scene and you don't have your measuring tape, it is going to work in a pinch. So it does work pretty well. Another application that I want to talk about is uh, this one. And you're going to be surprised at this. I know you're likely going to think to yourself, well, what advanced one are you going to use, Kevin? And it's this one, a calculator. Uh, I almost hear this round of applause. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe it's a groan. But the whole idea is I'm not a math whiz anymore. I, it's been a long time since I've gone to school and I have got lazy using calculators, Excel spreadsheets, and all sorts of other self-calculating applications. So when it comes to adding and subtracting and doing that stuff really quick or multiplication, you know what? A calculator just works easy rather than trying to write things down. The iOS app comes with a built-in calculator and I know Android does too. Why bother fighting it? Just use it. It just makes sense. Getting on into some other applications, one that I find works really well here, and, and it works well both in an incident investigation, but workplace inspections, and where there's a situation where not necessarily unsafe work, but maybe unhealthy work, and that's where there's not adequate lighting or it's too bright, and that's a light meter. The light meter works pretty simple. It uses the camera just and calculates the amount of light being shined at the camera but it can also use you can also use it to determine the light being shine uh, reflected off of a surface as well and i'll do that right now i've got a light source right here and uh, you have two cameras a picture of two cameras down the bottom left hand side you have uh, 
a bigger camera and a smaller camera. The bigger camera is the front facing camera right here. Now, if I tap and hold that, it starts to calculate the numbers and it does it in live time. And so what I do, I'm going to do is along the surface of my desk, I'm just shining the light on the surface of my desk and it's calculating the light being reflected off. If I move it further away, obviously the numbers are going to go down. If I move it closer, the numbers are going to go up. Now, in my office slash studio here, I have lights set up. So if I hold the phone closer to the light, you see the numbers grow higher. Uh, once again, I find if you're just using it, say you want to use it on a work surface and determine if the light being cast down or the illumination is adequate, I just hit the front facing camera or the camera that's on the front of the phone. And so right now, the way the angle is, it's not that great. If I turn it towards where the lights for the studio are showing, the light value goes up. Now, I'll just stop it here. Where I've used this, I've used it in a couple of different applications where one, the person has said the glare was so bad I couldn't see. Oh, glare. And I was able to determine that, no, it wasn't that bad. Uh, when replicating the situation based on that person's testimony, the glare was not that bad at all. Now, the other application where it came in very handy I received a complaint that workers uh, in a certain area, in a certain department, the work surfaces, their desks, everything, they were not able to see and it was very, the lighting was very dim. Went there and before we start the whole investigation, because if you think about it, that investigation means we have to clear out workers, stop work, go to each workstation, test each workstation, etc. What I did is I just took my phone there, used the application, you know what? Just like that. Whoops, sorry, bumped the mic. Just like that. I was able to determine that, you know what, it was too dim. The lighting was not adequate. So what that meant was, yes, we are going to have to do a whole investigation. Had I gone there, my phone was showing adequate lighting based on uh, different lighting scales or publications that you have at your disposal. Then, you know what, I would have said, no, no, no. Uh, right now, this concludes that the lighting is adequate. Basically. I used the app to springboard into another investigation, a formal one. I didn't use it as the be all to end all. The app demonstrated the yes, we need, we need to investigate further. Now, let's say for instance, that the lighting levels were just on, my phone showed me that they were just on the edge uh, of being adequate or just on the edge of being inadequate. Yes, I would have done an investigation then too as well. The device works pretty simple. Tap it, you get a live readout, use it. The next one is this one and it's a decibel meter. And the reason I use that is for the simple fact, a lot of times, it, I mean, pretty sure that you've all been in an investigation where you've heard, I didn't hear it because the noise was so loud or I was standing this close to the machine and I couldn't hear the warning. Using this, taking it and holding it close to where the reception of the sound would be, you can make that determination. We see as I'm talking and I'll be here to tell you uh, over YouTube, it's going to sound a lot quieter depending on where your volume is on your computer, but that's based on a lot of different factors. I'm actually talking in a level that's above normal conversation. Normal conversation would be about like this right now. And so normal conversation runs in between anywhere between 52 and 65 to 70 decibels. But I'm talking at a higher level because I have a microphone in front of me and a lot of different reasons. So what this does is it enables you to springboard an investigation. Should you uh, find that the noise was too loud, then you're going to have to get an actual noise meter. Same thing as if uh, you get told, I can remember once uh, a person said, there's this high pitch squeal coming from this uh, uh, device and I'm afraid I'm going to go deaf. When I went to measure it just with my phone, it was only at 55. Holding the phone right against the device, it was only at 55 decibels. So no, you're not going to go deaf. Usually, depending on the jurisdiction, it's anywhere from 85 to 88 decibels for at least a four hour exposure for considering damage. Once again, stick with what it is, is in your jurisdiction and, and use the proper measurements. But what this device does is it allows you to springboard into uh, investigating further. 
Also, if you don't have the proper equipment, it does work in a pinch. Another uh, application that I do use as well in these situations is this one, an airflow calculator. And fairly simple, uh, whether you're using uh, measuring a circular duct or a rectangular duct. Uh, considering the airflow, how much it is in the cubic feet per minute, and basically you would likely get that from any kind of building plans. This is not a volometer. It does not measure face velocity or velocity along any kind of airflow. What it does is it calculates the airflow once you know it. You have to know what the airflow is supposed to be, but it calculates that airflow and the air speed and the flow rate. And it does come in handy because a lot of times we as safety professionals will do indoor air quality investigations. We will consider about exhaust systems and their ability to remove fumes and particulate. So a lot of times we'll have to calculate airflow and this little calculator dealie does come in handy. Another application that I use as well is this one and it's a chemical library. It does come in handy uh, if you have, and I'll just quickly get rid of that one for a sec, if you have something that's proprietary, uh, say your workplace has a subscription to something like, say, MSDS Online. I no longer have a username and password with it because I don't belong to an organization that uses it at the moment. But um, if you have that, by all means, use that. If you don't, this one works pretty well. And there's a few of them online that you can use. And they do work really well if um, you have the chemical name and one of the identifying numbers. Now, the reason I say that this comes in handy, I had to uh, investigate a lab inventory area where there was a dangerous hazardous chemical spill and a neutralizing agent was attempted to be used and it actually made things worse. And when we were there trying to investigate while everything was going on, the container of the neutralizing agent only had a name and the CAS number on it. That was it. There was no proper uh, GHS or Wemis label or anything like that. So fortunately, one of the team members that was with me was able to look it up on a library very similar to this, and we found out was the wrong neutralizer. Now, thankfully, long story short, fire department showed up, had the right neutralizer, fixed it, everything, Bob's your uncle, everything worked out fine. It, it is a good thing to have, especially if you end up investigating some sort of chemical spill or something was of uh, that nature. Now, a couple of honorable mentions here. One of them is this one, which is a radioactive converter. Now, I've only ever been involved in one investigation in 20 years of any kind of radioactivity. So depending on your situation, would you need to download this? Likely not. However, if you do something like you're working around organizations that do non-destructive testing or healthcare where radiation is often used in diagnostics, then you know what? Maybe it might be for you. However, you know what? Chances are you're likely not going to make use of something like that. One of the things that you want to consider when you're downloading the apps is what are you going to use? Um, one of the ones that I use, but I didn't show, is a converter or a converter app for converting distances, weights, and other measures. Once again, it's depending on your situation. I find I haven't used it a lot in an investigation because if I start measuring in inches and feet, I keep it inches and feet and I don't go between the two. If I start in centimeters, then I continue on, especially if most of the plans for the room I'm investigating were done in standard measurements, then I keep up and I measure everything the same way. A couple of other things to consider when you're looking at all of this is what are the reasons for your investigation? These are some important considerations. Now, for instance, is it going to lead to discipline? Is there termination possible? Most of the time, your intention for investigating is to prevent future incidents from occurring. But a lot of times, as a result of your investigation, I've talked about it before in my Incident Investigation Theory and Practice series, is that uh, discipline uh, leading up to impossible termination can occur. There's other considerations such as civil litigation, insurance claims. You want to make sure if that's the case, you use the proper tools for the proper job or in fact, if you have to, hire subject matter experts. If you're not uh, familiar with measuring things to do with occupational hygiene, such as measuring light, measuring airflow, 
measuring uh, indoor air quality, during an investigation is not the time to learn. Hire uh, an outside subject matter expert and then try to learn what you can off of them or start bettering your training and education. The other thing to consider is the authority having jurisdiction may require copies of your report. And if you're including in there that you did everything with your phone, eh, it might not go over so well. So you might want to just use it as a springboard. It's all dependent on the purpose of your investigation, what you're doing it for. Now, one word of warning when you're using these uh, other devices like light meters and sound meters or noise measuring meters and indoor air quality measuring equipment is this stuff needs to be calibrated and often certified annually. So make sure you're aware of the needs of that device and include that maintenance so you're maintaining it properly. The last thing you want to do is grab it and find out it wasn't working properly during your investigation. Now, as I promised, some issues around the phone. Two things. Number one, privacy issues. And that's going to lead me to the next point. But when you're recording things, a lot of organizations, when you sign non-disclosure uh, non agreements, that means exactly that, non-disclosure agreements. So that means if you're walking away with your own personal phone and it's got company stuff on it, such as uh, uh, photographs of the accidents, incidents, etc., may put you in a really bad place. So one of the things you might want to do is make sure that you're using company phone and if not, at least a camera and video camera, etc. if that's the case, so that you're not going to put your own phone in jeopardy because a lot of times, and there's been situations where I've had colleagues where their phone had to be wiped prior to leaving the organization or there was uh, instances where they had to download all of the information and lots of a circus behind it. So make sure that the organization you're working with, if they don't supply the phone, that you have some sort of an agreement in place regarding how you're going to use your phone, especially for capturing images of an incident, etc. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to leave some links up in the corners for additional videos. Please do me a favor, check them out. Let me know what you thought. Uh, until we see each other again, and I really, really hope we do. Don't just think about safety. Don't just talk about safety. But be a safety influencer. Be a provoker. Provoke safety wherever you are. Okay? Take care. Bye for now.